hello so far we are ready with the expression for entropy following the statistical method of counting the number of microstates and we have obtained a semi classical expression for entropy starting with the famous boltzmann's relation s equal to k log omega and we have been successful in establishing the equation of state for a classical ideal gas now we will be discussing a historical paradox known as the gibbs paradox related to the entropy of mixing of two subsystems containing two gases hope you understand what's meant by a paradox a paradox is a situation where we get a result which is against what we logically think of nammal malayalathile adine vairudhyam ennoo virodhavasam ennoo ke vilikkam whatever we think of or whatever we logically arrive at the result the result will be different once you solve it by one method and by solving it by the other method you will be getting another result so we will say that there exists some uh, sort of controversy some sort of uh, mismatch between what is expected and what we are getting so such a situation where we get unexpected result or where we get what a result which is just opposite to what we expect is usually known as what a paradox okay so vairudhyangal uh, namukku vena malayalathil krithyamayitte adine tarjam cheyan pettumayirikkam okay so uh, we are going to discuss such a type of paradox that arises out of uh, okay our expression that we have derived uh, previous uh, sessions uh, for the entropy of classical ideal gas so uh today uh, okay i will be just giving an introduction of uh, the gibbs paradox and we'll be discussing gibbs paradox in uh, a detail great detail and uh, gibbs paradox was later generalized uh, by uh, discussing the entropy of mixing of uh, two ideal gases uh, either uh, okay similar gases and dissimilar gases and uh, hence we can say that um, uh, the entropy of mixing and uh, gibbs paradox they are both a paradoxical situation related to the extensive nature of entropy okay we have seen the, uh, the right from the beginning that the physical quantities uh, that we come across in uh, thermodynamics and statistical mechanics can be usually classified into two categories one is known as the extensive category or extensive quantity and the other one is known as the intensive parameters extensive and intensive parameters right and you know uh, what makes uh, the distinction between them Uh, certainly you know that extensive parameters uh, do depend upon the extent or size or the number of particles of the system or the volume of the system if you have uh, okay uh, a system with a volume v if you double the volume and if some properties of the system is also getting doubled we call such properties as what extensive and we know from our thermodynamic uh, thermodynamic uh, concepts uh, we know that uh, entropy uh, like many other quantities is one of the extensive quantities that is a well established fact entropy is an extensive quantity right and uh, see we will be using the expression for uh, entropy that we derived uh, okay uh, just uh, now or uh, in the previous sessions which we called as a semi classical expression for entropy uh, using counting of the microstates let me reproduce that expression here so the uh, semi classical expression for entropy i think it will be okay uh, easy if you consider that equation semi classical i'm calling it a semi classical expression or equation for entropy of classical ideal gas for entropy of classical ideal gas system this is a topic ideal gas i uh, hope you remember uh, okay we made a very important assumption that uh, okay you know considering while deriving this entropy we considered uh, okay the gas particles to be distinguishable considering uh, the particles the particles means gas molecules to be 
distinguishable. You know, distinguishability is a feature of classical uh, okay, thermodynamics, distinguishable. And uh, that's why we derived, uh, that is a assumption, okay, classical assumption, uh, okay, uh, by which we counted the number of microstates, considering the particles to be uh, distinguishable. So, semi-classical expression was obtained as S, S, I am writing it as a function of E, V and N or NVE, whatever it is, uh, which is the macro state variables relevant here for the isolated system. So that is equal to, hope you can recall that one, it is equal to NK log, a bit length equation. We had V by H cubed, then in a sub bracket 4 pi m e by 3 n 4 pi m e by 3 n all raised to 3 by 2 okay so then one more term was left out that is plus 3 by 2 e n k so let me say this is the equation that we have derived starting from uh, s equal to k log omega and substituting for the multiplicity omega uh, by uh, say considering the phase space volume and relevant details. So this is now what is known as the semi-classical expression for entropy. Uh, okay. Now uh, actually the Gibbs paradox uh, it is the result of a thought experiment. You know I think you understand what is maybe thought experiment. So uh, many of the experiment that we perform in the lab is real experiments. You know, okay, we just uh, handle the equipments, uh, we just uh, make connections, or we make uh, okay all experimental arrangements really. But uh, there are certain experiments. Most of the okay ideas that has come up in uh, uh, physics is a result of uh, famous thought experiments done by people. Okay, like you know, uh, it's just like you dream. Okay, or you think of what would happen if. Okay, like you know, we uh, say that uh, the apple itself fell on uh, Newton's okay uh, head. Okay, whether or not it has happened, uh, it's uh, still uh, just uh, like a question. But uh, anyway, uh, you know that uh, it's thought that okay, such a thing would have ignited uh, Newton's thought. Similarly, Josiah Williard Gibbs. Uh, okay, uh, he is known as Gibbs, and Gibbs uh, is um, one among uh, the pioneers of statistical mechanics okay, who along with uh, Boltzmann have developed a lot of theories and we are going to just see Gibbs idea of ensembles which has revolutionized the statistical mechanics uh, okay, uh, concepts. So uh, full name is Josiah Billiard Gibbs. Uh, so uh, he uh, had thought of a situation what finally resulted in a problem. He thought, okay, uh, see what would happen if, uh, uh, see, some gases are getting mixed up, right, under certain situations. And uh, the result of the thought experiment came out as a paradox, and which later became known as the Gibbs paradox. And uh, the, the Gibbs paradox was later generalized, okay, by considering the mixing of uh, two uh, similar gases and then dissimilar gases. And uh, then uh, the Gibbs paradox situation was, uh, okay, uh, just... Uh, uh, generalized to be called as what the mixing paradox so Gibbs paradox and mixing paradox are uh, interrelated so it was uh, beginning was with the Gibbs paradox as a result of thought, uh, thought experiment by uh, Gibbs and later uh, the problem was elaborated by considering the mixing of uh, okay two dissimilar gases and then uh, okay considering the mixing of two similar gases uh, inert gases uh, that we will discuss in detail okay so usually the Gibbs paradox is also okay uh, just uh, connected with what is known as entropy of mixing so whenever we discuss about the entropy of mixing uh, we uh, recall the famous thought experiment by Gibbs uh, that is the Gibbs paradox okay so uh, now uh, let me explain what actually is the paradox so the paradox can be very simply explained uh, right from the equation that I have written now the semi-classical expression for the uh, thing so you know uh, we know thermodynamically from our concepts of thermodynamics we already know that uh, uh, this uh, entropy must be an extensive uh, quantity so entropy must be an extensive quantity right okay so that is why uh, just I have stated it's a paradoxical situation related to the extensive nature of entropy so this is the core idea in Gibbs paradox 
uh, it questions the extensive or uh, it's a uh, blow to the extensive nature of entropy which is an established fact okay and uh, let's see come come to this equation you know uh, see extensive variables are uh, as per mathematical definition they are homogeneous functions of degree one right so which means that if i double if i double uh, each of its natural variables so here what are the natural variables here so the natural variables over here are uh, the energy you know the macrostate variables energy uh, the volume and the number of particles are the natural variables here right so if we double each of these natural variables then the entropy uh, okay as a whole should be getting doubled then we will say that uh, okay entropy is a uh, homogeneous function of degree one right and hence it is extensive and you know that uh, intensive variables are homogeneous functions of degree zero as we have discussed in our preliminary uh, okay, uh, sessions right so uh, let's uh, now check it if if all the variables all the related variables e v and en are doubled so let's discuss okay are doubled so means i'm multiplying each of the variable by uh, two so for example uh, in our theory we have been multiplying with lambda so here lambda equal to two therefore what will be equation number one becoming so let me say that what be the entropy now so therefore we can see that the entropy is of 2e i have doubled each of them 2v and 2n means i have doubled all the three natural variables of entropy so that will be equal to so let me make the change on the right side of equation number one so n has to become 2n so i'll be writing 2n so i'm just substituting okay putting it in a bracket so that you can understand that i have doubled it everywhere so k log no change over there then in the bracket where uh, v ha has to be doubled so i'm writing it as 2v 2v i just put a bracket okay it's not a must okay so by h cubed then there is uh, 4 pi em then i'm making doubling there for energy as well divided by 3 en also has to be doubled into 2n whole raised to 3 by 2 whole raised to 3 by 2 plus 3 by 2 into 2n and there also has to be doubled into k so that is equation number 2 so let me make some modification here you know uh, this 2 okay and this 2 will be getting cancelled away so no trouble out of that so my question to you is that is this one equal to is this one equal to 2 times 2 times s of evn is it equal to 2 times s of evn as we expect number of the pole equation number two and the bar in the twice equation number one are no what we have done is that we followed the definition of extensive nature of entropy we double all the natural variables okay now and you can see that it's not it's not why we can see that if it should uh, uh, okay if it should have been uh, uh, say twice that thing then what would have happened you can see that there's a problem the problem here i think i can clearly see here so it is uh, two into the two is appearing here no problem so is it not so if you are uh, just uh, uh, multiplying by two here so what would have happened I'm multiplying with the two here. Just check it like this. Then what should have happened? So it should have become two into the first term. Is it not? Two into the first term plus two into two will be coming over here also, right? So of course that two has come over here. So if you keep that two here, two has come over here. That's okay. But what's the problem? And two has come with this one also. So here it has it is two n. But can't you see that? And there is you know, the quantity in the bracket should not be getting affected. You know. Okay, quantity in the bracket should not be getting affected. So you can see that as far as this particular quantity is thing, that is not affected because the two here in the numerator and the two here in the denominator has got cancel away. But you can't you see that there is a two that is remaining extra here inside the bracket. So due to the presence of this two with the volume V here, you can say that this particular thing, expression obtained by doubling the variables is not equal to twice what the 
entropy expression given by 1 means the entropy is not extensive as predicted by the principles of thermodynamics entropy is not obtained as extensive but we know it's an established fact that entropy is ex extensive so means there is some sort of what you call there is some sort of uh, a paradoxical situation here Entro so you can consider it like this you know okay you have got uh, just see that no okay you have got uh, a system right a system you have got and you have got an identical system you have got an identical system is not the meaning so the first system has got e v and en and the second system has got what also e v en all right so you know that if the first system has got entropy yes the second system also should be having what identical system no should be also having what entropy yes right so if you remove this partition if you remove this partition the total entropy you know all other things remaining same the total entropy should be equal to what s plus s 2s right so uh, but what we are getting is that you know, okay just uh, when you double the variables okay you are not getting back 2s so you don't get 2s so uh, it means that the entropy of a system is different from the entropy of its parts and this paradoxical situation is what is known as what the gibbs paradox so i repeat what is gibbs paradox gibbs paradox uh, arises out of the semi classical expression for entropy of an ideal gas where once you double all the variables all the natural variables you are getting an expression which is not giving you the uh, two times the entropy of its uh, original system or entropy of a system is obtained as different from the entropy of its parts which is against the established results of uh, thermodynamics and this paradoxical situation is what is known as what gibbs paradox so we will be discussing about the gibbs paradox connected with the entropy of mixing uh, so we'll be considering first the entro the mixing of two dissimilar gases what is shown in the first uh, diagram here so you are taking two dissimilar gases in two containers like here and there is a uh, you can see a valve here you can see which can be opened and closed initially it is closed so you can see two different gases are taken two dissimilar gases are taken uh, under identical conditions May, maybe uh, temperature is the same and uh, we allow it to mix we will calculate what is the entropy s1 of this system what is the entropy s2 of this subsystem and what is the total entropy of the combined system okay s total okay s total similarly thereafter we will be discussing the uh, mixing of two similar gases so two similar gases are taken in two containers of the same manner and we open the valve to allow them to mix up so we will be calculating what will be the entropy here s1 and s2 okay what will be the entropy of the total mixture and thereby we will be discussing okay uh, what you call the entropy of mixing which is a generalization of the gibbs paradox so uh, you can always understand uh, why this paradox situation arises because we had made a very important uh, okay or a very uh, see what you can a questionable assumption in the derivation of the semi classical expression for entropy uh, means uh, there is something okay uh, messy about our equation we have derived after taking a lot of pain earlier right so it is evident in the case of mixing of two gases and finding the resultant entropy and i think uh, we will be having a separate uh, discussion on uh, the entropy of mixing in a uh, in the next video so thank you for watching